Here is Zar's full brother, and he is as big a two-year-old as his dad is as an 18-year-old. And I keep these two stallions right here together. There's Daddy. Uh, since he hasn't been ridden for the last three, four years, his, he's lost a lot of his hip. He is turned out in pasture in the summer with these, with all the stud colts, and because they we hand breed. But and uh, so he's he impaled himself on a post three years ago, and I've had he's hurt. And, <laughs> this is the brother. Just look at that eye, that soft eye, and he's as calm and nice and same, the same as the other colt. The, the kindness is there, and that's the way the stud is. And um, uh, you should just, you just, they just have such a nice disposition, and his babies all have that. And it's it's awesome. And the colt, he just hangs out with his dad. Now he's just a coming two-year-old, and he looks like a horse. He doesn't even look like, you know how some people's two-year-olds are lean and leggy and and get all their height first. The blackbirds grow slow. Quit eating that. The blackbirds grow slow and grow like a horse. They start out looking like a horse, and they stay like a mature horse as they grow. I can't explain it, but I'm sure you've seen that in some other bloodlines, but that's how the blackbirds are. And this colt is just... I love him. And he's very curious. And his brothers see the nice nose. There's his legs. He's kind of got one foot turned out right now. He's the way he's standing downhill. He just had his first trim the other day, ever. And uh, I'm gonna walk up to him here and get a close up of his little eye. His eye. Oh, Dandy. I we call him Dandy. Just look at that eye. That that just matters to to me. I see a lot of a horse's personality in their eye, and um, all he is is curious. And and but he's he's not a lovey dovey either. If I put my hands on him, he would leave, you know. And but he'd come back. They're kind of like boomerangs, and uh, that's kind of what I call them. And old Studley here, he. Uh, he gets bayish in the winter, but he's just a deer uh, doe skin color most of the time. But in the winter he gets, but he has a heavy mask. Um, he's got modeling all the way up his legs, all the way up to his shoulders. He's got his wither stripes. He's got ear stripes, neck stripes, but he does not have tiger stripes. But he, a lot of his colts do. The, these two gorilla colts do have it on their legs, and expect heavy manes. Um, <laughs> he's still following me. Very little white, although once in a great while one will pop out. They almost always have black hooves, almost always. If they have a little white, even still, the hoof will be black. The other colt, the yearling czar, has a little white coronary corner on one of his back feet. Dandy, you got to quit coming at me. But there's the old man. And uh, in his prime, he was beautiful. And I know some studs just stay like that all the time, but he had a really bad year, the year he pelled himself on a post and... He also lost some teeth in the front. He couldn't graze, and I didn't really wasn't aware of it. And I had him turned out on pasture because of his injury in the chest. I wanted him to walk around a lot. That's what the vet wanted. 
so it wouldn't build up a scar tissue in there. And here are his front scissor, his grazing teeth. Um, they were just, he had injured them uh, hmm, probably two years before that, so about four years ago. He had uh, ran right into the pipe corrals and in where I used to live and slid into them head first and he had hit with his face and his teeth and that must have damaged the gums bad enough because I had to take him to the vet because his mouth was just bleeding horrible and and the teeth looked good they weren't loose but it must have damaged the roots and in the last two years his those front teeth have uh, decayed away because of the damage the injury and so now he didn't do so good on grass but he did really good this last year he's made a comeback so <laughs> feeling better about him I got scared enough to buy another stallion that's where Mr. Poco Blackburn 108 came into play because this guy looked really bad last year and two years ago but he's come back now he's tough bad thing about these guys they will eat anything you put in front of them everything they have very good appetites uh, they've never foundered, but I mean, if you have straw and they're hungry, they'll eat straw. They'll they just eat. They if it's bad hay, they'll eat it. They don't they just eat. So in that regard, have to be careful what you put in front of them. And they're all like that. They're all easy keepers as far as keeping a nice good weight on them. Never had any fussy ones ever. Not even with these colts. And he's just right here on me. That, that's the full brother, and uh, he's, he's going to come with me now. Yeah, I can't wait to get him under saddle. I'm just excited about it. We haven't even drove him ourselves or anything. My daughter's pregnant this year, and she hasn't done a lot of that. This last year, she's working on her filly so she can get her sold. She's on Dream Horse. Dot com. If you look, search under Bilby, B-I-L-B-Y, you can look at her. She's not out of our stud, but she was a, a future broodmare prospect, but she's not 100% uh, foundation. So as we start culling, that's one of the things we are culling for is the foundation percentage. And so... And if you were into foundation horses, you would understand that. Sometimes it's hard to make a decision. Yeah. Bernsey. Hi, babe. Hi, babe. Good boy. <laughs> you got straw stuck in your mane.